So a uh, big round of applause to Kevin Thompson. You can applaud yourself, Kevin. That was a great presentation he gave. Sounded like someone had pressed play on the on a very polished recording, but it was heartfelt. And I can't wait to talk more about the book. Uh, Eric Willis, who was our first musical guest on the show, Eric hosts an open mic night at P2 downtown every second and fourth Wednesday. I'm going to leave it to you to do the math. I have no idea how, how that relates to today or when you're watching this video. But just get a calendar. If you can count to two and then four, that's where he is. Those are the Wednesdays that he's at P2. It's from uh, 7 till midnight. The first two hours is him performing with a special guest. And then from 9 to 12, it's uh, open mic. He's very talented, and that's a, that's a fun show they have over there. The man Jack Damsel is performing in Old Town Saloon on Saturday, April 21st. Uh, Old Town's always free, no cover, music starts at 10. The Wichita Falls Derby Dames are having a car wash to raise money for all of their awesomeness. On April 21st, uh, it's a Saturday, uh, San Jacinto Day if you're from Texas, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Taco Bell at Southwest uh, Parkway and and Kemp. Now that address, if you're typing it into your map, your Google map is 2803 Southwest Parkway. Uh, they'll be washing cars over there. I don't know if this is a, hang on, let me go to the flyer here. I guess this is a donations based car wash. You come get your car wash. Hot girls wearing fishnet and God knows what else or what not else. <laughs> Tip them, for God's sakes. Uh, also, they will be pre selling tickets to their inaugural bout on May 12th, uh, but if you stop by there, you'll be able to buy tickets. Uh, it's their first bout. It's on uh, at Impact on Saturday, May 12th. Pre-sale tickets are $12 for, for adults, um, $5 for kids 6 to 12. If you wait to buy them at the door, uh, they're $15. You can find the Derby Dames on Facebook. Uh, you can also find them online at wfderbydames.com. Uh, we do want to thank the, the businesses that make this possible, uh, and uh, starting with our newest sponsor, uh, which is goes by the name of In Case Backup. Your whole life is on computer. Photos, videos, contacts, emails, legal and financial records. What would happen if you lost them? It, ha it happens all the time. Hard drives crash, computers get lost or stolen, or taken out by a virus. Don't let it happen to you. Protect yourself with in-case backup. With plans starting at just $8.50 per month, in-case backup will do just that. Backup your digital possessions safely, quickly, and privately. Don't put it off until tomorrow. Visit incasebackup.com and sign up today, just in case. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Wilson Office Supply. Uh, they have provided this ergonomically fabulous chair, this uh, this this fabulous drafting chair, which supports the lower back. It's the best chair I've ever had. I'm not kidding. It's very comfortable. They have a whole line of ergonomically correct chairs uh, that they're branding as backs by the better backs by design. Uh, go downtown, check out their showroom there at eight and. Lamar. Lamar. I should know that. The south, the, the northeast corner of 8th and Lamar. And uh, check out their, their line of ergonomically correct chairs. Uh, these are quality pieces of furniture. Uh, it's not the kind of disposable chair you buy at Walmart or Office Depot. These things are built to last and uh, you spend eight hours a day sitting in your chair at work. Uh, you should It should be in a, in a chair that works with you, not against you. So better backs by design. I also want to thank Phil and Chill. Fabulous drive through convenience store on Southwest Parkway across from the McDonald's. They are uh, they have a great drive through service, fabulous car hops. I've seen pictures. And uh, a whole lot of, of, of great prices, uh, hot foods. Uh, they compete with Walmart on prices for cigarettes and beer. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great store to have in our, our neighborhood. It's just a couple minutes walk from here so we're frequent customers and you should be too. 
So Phil and Chill. I also want to thank you. I've been remiss the last couple of weeks. My good friend, for no uh, no charge at all, Greg Wright, has loaned us this PA for the duration of this show. At some point, I suspect I'll be buying it, which only seems right, uh, since we couldn't really do the show without him. So, Greg, thank you very much. Uh, you're a you're a minch. You're a great guy, helping us out with the the sound we need. This is one of my favorite stories. This is called, Can I Not Get Back to You on That? Sort of like a letter. Dear, your name here. It's time to be honest with you. It's time to come clean. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. For a long time I held out hope that an intervening force or some serendipitous event might get me out of the mess that I'm in. But like a gambler who's doubled down one too many times, or a con man who's finally told one more lie than he, than he can keep up with, I've simply run out of options. I have no choice but to just bite down hard and face the inescapable truth of my situation. Here it goes. I'm not going to return your call. I meant to. You have to believe me. It wasn't a lie when I said it. But there's no denying that it is a lie today. Hours passed, then days, followed by countless turned pages of a daily planner that now mocks my very being. But now I stand before you, emotionally exposed, spiritually stripped, and communicationally compromised, with only the promise of no more promises to give me cover. That and the truth, which is that I'm not calling you back, ever. Oh, and the email response I was going to send you? Not going to happen either. Truth is, I have in the foggiest notion what your email was about. I may have read it, but then maybe I didn't. Either way, I deleted it weeks ago and haven't given it a second thought, except that is, when you bring it up every single time I run into you at Starbucks. Same goes to that article I was going to send you about that thing. Or that question you had a while back. Or whatever it was I said I'd do for you. Obviously, I'm not going to do it. It seems that would be evident to you by now. Please don't take this personally. It's not you. It's me. Okay, it's also you. But it's also the many, many other people who will be receiving this communication. People who, like you, should abandon all hope that I still intend to A, buy tickets to their fundraiser, B, come over to their house someday for a cookout, or C, call that guy about that thing on your behalf. As it turns out, I'm just not the kind of person who does those kinds of things. I'm as surprised as you. At first it was fun and exciting to be the center of attention, constantly receiving offers from weighty people such as yourself, seeing your name in my inbox, or on my caller ID. It made me feel important and special. But over time, I realized that you were sending out these offers to pretty much everybody, leaving me with only the burden of making the minimum effort to keep our relationship solvent. Soon, even that became overwhelming. One last thing, and it's taking all the personal courage I can muster to admit this to you. Remember that time you stopped by my home, presumably because you figured, and rightly so, that it was the only way you were ever going to actually speak to me? Well, remember how my cell phone rang several times and I casually, some might say automatically, sent them all directly to voicemail? Remember me telling you how I seldom did that, least of all to your calls, and that I was only doing it then out of respect for our personal conversation? Are you really going to make me say it out loud? <laughs> don't look at this as a bad thing, and definitely don't think of this as the end of whatever one might call our relationship. Rather, look at it as a, as a beginning, a clean slate. And let's be honest, I need one. At the rate I've mortgaged my future to returning phone calls, responding to emails, and otherwise honoring countless communications-based promises, it would have taken years to catch up. But this one quick and admittedly insensitive gesture, with it I'm back to even. Consider it the communications version of a debt consolidation loan. No, that's not quite right. A debt consolidation loan still has to be repaid, and we both know that's not going to happen. Bankruptcy. That's it. 
bankruptcy. I am declaring personal communications bankruptcy. With a wave of my quasi-judicial wand, I am absolved of all of my message-based obligations. What a relief. I'm actually going to have to think about how to spend all the free time that will soon be coming my way. Maybe we can get together to visit. I'll give you a shout. Yeah.